Will, we are back to talk yeah. about an overview of measuring agility and what to expect in this course. This is a this is really if you haven't watched the introduction, that's a good place to start. Uh, so go back to that video. Here we're going to overview what you can expect in this course. Yeah. So um, we'll show you the we'll show you the screen in a moment. We'll go into a little bit more detail. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, just for clarity's sake in this class, we're gonna we're gonna start with with measurements and metrics, and then we'll talk about goals, and then we'll follow it up with a little bit of empiricism, right? How to use those measures to inspect and adapt your goals, um, and in turn inspect and adapt those metrics. Though one thing that will and, and we do this for clarity's purpose um but one thing that you'll find throughout is that actually starting with goals in practice makes selecting metrics a whole lot easier mm -hmm. um, but we'll talk to you first about the metrics and then introduce goals to tell you how we got to those metrics um, so do keep that in mind when you actually start applying some of these things Shall we show a little bit of our overview, Todd? Yeah, you know, I'm just going to add on to what you said here. I'm not going to put this uh, banner up on the bottom. It's really good to reach out and read the evidence-based management white paper on scrum.org, right? That's the foundation of all of this is the evidence-based management framework, right? You, Will, you mentioned the three components of that, goals, evidence, and empiricism. That's really what this class is all about. And I think now would be a good time to show exactly what we intend on doing uh, and talking about here throughout the duration of this class. You can see a really empty board right now, Will. We're gonna be filling this in in, uh, in small episodes and small bite-sized batches for people to understand. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got a nice mural, um, very zoomed out right now, but don't worry. <laughs> we'll go through each, each part in turn. Yeah. yeah, this is gonna be videos that we're gonna break down. So Will, you were mentioning, we're gonna start with evidence, right? Evidence, proof. Right? What's the proof? Um, now you were mentioning, well, what's the proof of what though? Right? So goals are really important. So at the, from, from an evidence perspective, uh, we will be talking about uh, the four key value areas of evidence-based management, right? We have unrealized value, current value, time to market, and ability to innovate. Uh, so those are four KVAs we'll be mentioning and referring to them as KVAs. Yeah. Um, well, you, you like to say, this is stuff we look at. This is stuff we look at, and and the important thing to know is we're going to share with you some of the metrics that we use in how we run our business. Um, they may not work for your business. Honestly, they may not even work for our businesses anymore uh, a week from now or a year from now. Um, that's that's one of the things you'll 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 come across. There's no best way to do this. And if we could tell you, hey, measure this, is this is going to be great for you, um, we'd be lying, right? Mm -hmm. What you're going to measure, the evidence that you're gathering is going to depend on what goal you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you said something really important there, and I'm going to kind of center it on some EBM terminology. Each key value area, KVA, has supporting KVMs, key value metrics. We'll give you some ideas on what a KVM is, basically to clarify what the KVA, the key value area means, but there is no legend to this. There is no certainty around what you should absolutely measure. measure. Some people find this frustrating at first. Some people find it very frustrating that we are not going to tell you exactly what you need to measure to understand product nirvana, right? Um, we're going to turn you on more towards the broader topics here so that you can discover on your own what you need to be measuring in the context of your situation right now, but that may change in the future. And so I think that was a really thing. I thought I'd pull out, use some EBM language there, just so we're starting to introduce a little bit of that, Will. Yeah. And we'll have, we'll have separate episodes on each KVA. Mm -hmm. So we'll do one on unrealized value, one on current value, one on time to market, and one on ability to innovate just so we can give you enough insight into each of them, why they're important to us, why they should be important to you, and how to find interesting things to measure there. Yeah. All the while, while we're building this board, which we'll make available um, post-class. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, Will, you said something really interesting in the beginning, and I'm moving over to goals, right? So we could have all these KVAs uh, set up, and we could have measurements underneath each one of them. But what does that tell us if we don't have goals? Exactly. 
exactly. So in three episodes, we will go into setting strategic goals, setting intermediate goals, and setting immediate tactical goals. We'll talk about what these things are. Um, we'll even tell you how they relate to things like OKRs. Um, right? They're not. These are not intended to replace any of those things. This is a level of abstraction higher. Um, and we'll share a little bit about how we formulate them um, and how we learned what works and what doesn't work for us and how also goals will help you determine what evidence to collect and how evidence in turn can influence what goals that you set for yourself. Yeah, it's really interesting how many times we run across people that are measuring things but don't know why they're measuring them, right? So if goals are vitally important. And so, so to really interweave this with human behavior, which we're gonna do throughout the duration of these episodes, evidence and what you measure and goals and how you set your goals is vitally important to how people behave in the office environment. If you don't have goals or if you have goals that are like, let's make lots of money and let's measure making lots of money, you're going to drive behaviors that you may not suspect or you may not expect to happen, right? So we're going to be talking a little bit about the human elements this and how these two things really impact how people behave, uh, which I, I think is a really interesting thing to consider, Will. Absolutely. Now, ultimately, the goal of EBM as a whole on setting these goals and gathering that evidence is to allow for empiricism, right? is to go to this new business paradigm fit for complex situations, right? Where you don't have all the answers and where the traditional planning process falls down because of uh, how comp complex the world is, how many variables are at play. So this is really the part where all of this comes together and we talk about how setting goals and gathering evidence will influence the way you do business, how you communicate, how you, what you replace planning with. Um, and we'll start off with, and, and we'll close actually with starting off, Yeah. right? Yeah. Here's how you get started. It's interesting here. You see two, two words that are sticking out here to me changing, right? Um, so it's okay to retire measurements and realize they're not valuable anymore. And, and uh, maybe some tips on when we have done this as businesses, when we've realized that things that we're measuring are just not relevant to what we're doing today. And then goals, by changing, that could mean retiring a goal. That could mean realizing that a goal is, as it's described, not something that we want to target anymore. Or maybe it's way more expensive than what we thought and we decide we don't want to pursue this anymore. And that's completely okay. All this is enabling us to inspect, adapt, and make it transparent to what's happening. No surprises, right, Will? No surprises. Absolutely. Yeah. And then we have some tips here of getting started, right? Um, you don't need to solve the whole world to get started. You don't need all of EBM. We'd want you to get started in a good place. We want you to get started so that you can get off the ground tomorrow. And so we'll give some tips and tricks for getting started here. Why don't we why don't we start off with telling them how to get started, Todd? Sure. What are you thinking, Will? <laughs> well, I'm 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 Watch thinking our videos. I'm thinking the 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 reason that comes at the end is we find that if we if we were just to tell you, well, here's how you craft a goal and here's how you attach measures to that goal, without understanding the why, without understanding and seeing through our examples what happens if you run your business in that in this way, just following a getting started guide might lead you to a wrong place. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's why we're using that as our finisher for this set of courses. Yeah, and, and and you know, getting started too really will. You get started in different ways depending on where you're at, depending on the context of your environment, and that's unrepeatable. That's not that, as many times as Will and I are out in the field working on EBM and implementing it. Well, I've never had one implementation even close to the next one, other than the EBM framework, right? But the conversations, the people, the products, the context are all so different, even in different parts of an organization. So that will be unique, I think, to people um, to, to, uh, that, are, that are coming into this. Uh, so our next video is gonna start kicking off the KVAs. Uh, and uh, I suppose we hope to see you there. Yeah, see you next episode.